Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to season three of the Surf and Sales podcast. I'm Scott Lees, and I'm here with my good friend and co-host and partner in crime in the Surf and Sales Summit, Richard Harris. If you uh, don't know, we have a couple sessions this year of the Surf and Sales Summit. The first one is in May of 2022, and it's already sold out. So you're out of luck there. We have two other sessions that are almost sold out in November of 2022. Check it out at surfandsales.com. Surf and Sales Podcast is brought to you by our good friends at Reprise, as well as Scratchpad, two cool companies, both hiring, both doing cool things. Check them out and show them some love. We are very excited today to welcome Season 3, Episode 1 guest. It's a uh, pretty cool honor. Can we call it an honor, Richard? We can call it anything we want, but I do agree with you. It is an honor. I think it's a pretty cool honor. You know, season one was just us, which is a pretty terrible guest right there. And then season two, episode one was Samantha McKenna, which is pretty great. Season three, episode one, we welcome Lori Dunn, director of sales at InfoSense. Welcome, Lori, and thanks for joining us. Hey, gents. Thanks for the honor. I will do my best to live up to Sam McKenna, but... Hopefully, I'll already have you two smoked by the end of this. Yeah, well, wow. just that comment already, uh, I think that you've got us beat if yeah. we go back to the <laughs> first so ever me, episode so, we ever did. Scott, She's already better than we were, Richard. Yes, I know. Scott, yeah. she called me yesterday, and I was busy, and uh, she's like, you know, well, I don't know if I should prepare or you know, talk about some dirt that we can use on Scott. Like, she was, she's- Oh, she was digging. Oh, yes. yeah, she's ready. But uh, now, now here's what every good salesperson does is they get good at research. So how did you find Richard's phone number? That's what I want to know. Ooh, he question. puts it everywhere. If you listen <laughs> to anything Richard does, he constantly says, and nobody ever calls me. And he they don't. They don't. So you four just, one so five. Look at that. Here you go. Lesson number four, four one Let's- five. Five nine six nine one four nine five nine six nine one four nine. Nobody ever calls or texts. Lesson uh, lesson number one for all you salespeople and sales leaders out there: go the extra mile. Look what Lori did. She uh, went the extra mile, picked up the phone, and called. Now she didn't get a hold of them or get a call back, but she tried. She but tried. I knew I was talking to her today, and That's why. I thought it would be more interesting to get your response, Scott. Live. Oh, in real time. <laughs> oh, in real yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Okay, Lori, tell everybody what it is you do as a director of sales at InfoSense, because that title can mean a lot of different things depending on where somebody is. Uh, yeah, so we are a, we're a small company. We're a team of seven right now. So uh, in terms of sales, I'm a team of me. I'm SDR, AE, Director, VP, CRO. I'm all of it right now. Um, I am helping us build out go-to-market strategy, building right now a lot of pipe. That's the goal. Uh, ideally getting me some solid numbers so I can start showing that sales velocity. And when we go for our seed round, because we are small and young, uh, then I can start bringing some reps in under me with what uh, I've been able to prove the past few months. Richard, sure. Lori, so Lori, hold on, Richard. Lori is doing the hardest thing that you can do. Yes. In, in building and scaling a sales team from literal scratch, from yes. nothing. Yeah. 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 So a couple of questions. So first question is, uh, give people a sense of what InfoSense is. So just so they understand where you're, the context of where some of your answers are coming from. Sure. Uh, we wrangle data. So energy efficiency pros can get back to solving climate change. Uh, for sales folks here listening, um, we, our platform, we sit kind of middleware. Like if you use a Zoom, Zoom Info, a seamless or that, they scrub data from everywhere and deliver it clean so it's actionable for you. Um, other people have compared us like Twilio for sensor data. But I work with folks who need to pull data out of any living space. I use a brand new kind of network, which I can kill you with buzzwords about. It's called LoRaWAN, which is why you see my Zoom thing has a capital R in my name because Laura, L-O-R-A, LoRaWAN. We use that, a series of open source sensors to extract that data. And we do a lot of fun work in the cloud. It's really heavy work that we do, but we make it super easy. So people are just handed a clean so data. Who are you? So who, cause you're a middleware, right? Like and we yeah. don't talk a lot about middleware. I, yeah. God, I can't even remember the last time we did, but um, so who are your clients? So is it, it, you know, I mean, you talk about seamless and those people who are like, you know, data providers, right? But kind of, yeah. are you also going to 
some enterprise company to help them with their data and and solving a pain there just so i you know yep absolutely so i have some customers um quick use case here um scott and i both enjoy cannabis i sell to a lot of growers Let, let's you know, be clear hold up scott <laughs> doesn't enjoy cannabis yeah. scott is uh, a walking i am for i am he cannabis is. He exactly pretty much yeah. right yeah uh, <laughs> so i will help right think high level we've spent thousands of years as society figuring out how to grow crops because of the effects of climate change we're moving it indoors how do you figure that out in one generation with the power uh, of data so i'm going to blanket a grow room with lots of sensors in the soil on the leaf above the canopies all around and i'll red light green light yellow light it and figure out what's working what's not increase increase their yields we help people optimize their yields i got can it. I have that a, I have HVAC, a client that. called farm logs that does that for oh. for the traditional farmers right in the field and yeah. they have the everything from drones to satellite imaging and soil sensors yeah. and stuff like that to help them maximize their crops. So now that, exactly. Right. And then there's a whole new kind of network, which is a faster, easier way to extract this data. Right. And we help our customers leverage that because we we've never been able to do this before. Right. So it, it feels very, my CEO and I chat about it a lot, but it's kind of like um, the 95.com. Like everyone's out here running around trying to figure out how to grasp a hold of Laura in yeah. an, in an effective way, including like a crypto company came out and put a token on top so, of it to so, help build it's, it's so cool. funny scott doesn't even know this i went to a, a meetup last night in the city in san francisco around um web 3.0 yeah. and blockchain and how all this data will be public and how do you use that right how do you take this kind of data and make it you know accessible not necessarily for free but in a blockchain environment so that you could take what Lori has and then what someone else and then whatever and then you can start to even get a bigger aggregation of stuff so um, we are definitely a part of that so you learned right. a lot of what we are we're we're right in that niche as well I, I would love I, yeah we Scott we need to get some web 3.0 on the podcast by the way uh, <laughs> yeah Scott's like I dude I'm still like 1995 in my uh Microsoft Word. Listen, listen I'm just barely figuring out the web Okay. Right. Yeah. If he can't figure out Zoom, should we really introduce Web three to him? <laughs> yeah, baby so, steps. Baby yeah. Steps. <laughs> baby steps. So anyway, well, thank you, thank you for for diving in there. I know I sort of sure. drove a, a big piece of that Scott. I saw you feverishly writing. You were uh, yeah. notes. Yeah, I was taking I was taking notes because that that's what I do. So I heard like three different kind of what I would frame as buzzwords. There's like clean tech. There's earth tech. And I just added this last one, like farm tech, because you're increasing yields and things like that. Yeah. Um, talk about the uh, talk about what selling in that industry is like. I would assume it's like you're going against very antiquated, you know, uh, platforms and modes of thinking, and so like inertia is probably your your most difficult competitor. Yes. Am I right? Yes, we right. are. So give people, people some. People like really love us. They think we're really fun and sparkly and shiny. So they'll have a lot of conversations that lead nowhere. And yeah. I yeah. hate it. Yeah. So I what are your best, it. what are your best tips for, uh, what are your best tips out there for overcoming the old inertia objection? Hey, Lori, your product is amazing. It's bright, shiny and new, but I think we're okay for right now. Um, it's all about that value. Did you do the work up front? Did you figure out, is it actually a problem for them? If it's a problem for them, we have somewhere to go. If it's not a problem for them and they're just here using you as a real time Google, like that's when you're screwed. So you got to go back to that initial part. We're actually in the middle of this, even adding it with our pricing right now. Like, oh, well, people actually pay that. Look at how much a device like, no, they care about one of these 10 things we offer them that we bundle in our license. That's the value right there. We're not going to talk per device. We're not get me out of there. I need yeah. to talk about this value, what matters to you. And if I can't drive that forward, I'll, I'll talk to you in a few more months. I have enough people knocking on my door because we're sparkly. They're always filling my calendar. So I, it's honing that message in a little bit and being able sit quietly and, and listen to what people are extracting. Like are you, I, I can pull so much. Yeah. Are you a proponent of messaging? Like, you know, you got to modernize the business. Are you, you know, uh, early adopter or late adopter? You're going to get passed up if you don't 
no. get on this train? You don't use any of that kind of lingo or language or messaging. No, because we're tied into what matters to them. We're tied into the bottom line, the money, uh, sustainability goals, et cetera. You know, I work with a lot of people, a lot of energy efficiency engineers spend a lot of time and money to educate themselves so they can solve climate change. They waste 50% of their day climbing on top of buildings, doing stupid shit, like putting all these old technologies in to grab that then the batteries die and they don't have good data in that then they, they get beleaguered and they're, sorry, my dog's shaking off. Uh, they get really beleaguered and they say, Hey, like, I'm not actually doing what I care to do. So when I'm talking to someone in their mid forties, who for the past 20 years has wasted a lot of their time in these old things, I can really hook them in with like, let's yeah. get you back to doing what you care about. Cause I know you do. And now you have kids and you're really looking at what the global look like. Like, let's keep, let's get oh, you back. She's, hitting, hitting, so, she's hitting them in the heartstrings, Richard. I know. So the emotion. Me, Scott, yeah. I'm going to quiz you. Right. Let's see how well you oh. know neat selling, right? You know my selling <laughs> methodology. What does the E stand for? Economic impact. There you go. That's what she's selling. She's yeah. selling the economic impact of those 10 things, right? Yeah. Because that's what they really care about. So, uh, and the, one of, I mean, Scott, you've done this too, because with what you did at Qualia, sort of really disrupting that old school. Yeah. Um, if your addressable market is big enough, it's almost like a joy to find, I love how she said mid forties. Um, Cause that's Scott. That means Scott's getting old, right? I'm all right. I'm way past that number. So, uh, but I, everyone here is a young spring chicken. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, but my, but my, my, my point is, is that those people self-select out. If you ask the right questions right? You can ask enough of the right questions. They'll be like, no, I'm going to do a status quo. And you know, you'll come back to them and you know, they'll come back to you. So that's one of the things I do like about selling into a, you know, as much as I hate the buzzword, the disruptive economy, right? Um, where it's old paperwork and shit like that. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of power there as a seller to be like, all right, well, I'll circle back in six months when you're struggling and everybody else is lapping you. That's why right. I was curious if she's using any of that kind of Kind of I land. probably should. I should probably have a few different ways I do it. Um, so, not yet. Maybe I'll, when I hire yeah. a new so seller, here, they'll let's use do that this. method. So let's I'm going to pop quiz Scott Lee again. Scott yes. didn't even study today. So Coach Lori, Scott, you run into this person who's old school and coach, coach people listening. And they're, you know, they're nice. They're friendly. They're answering questions. How do you say to them, okay, I, it sounds like this isn't the right time. Mm -hmm. What do you do that's that says it, that's polite, that's professional. And then I know Scott Lease likes to tweak them just a little. Well, you know, I, I think I would say, yeah, I hear you. It doesn't sound like it's the right time right now, but I have a question for you. Uh, are you the number one blank in the area or in your industry? No, no, I'm not. You know, we're probably top 20 or something like that. Okay. What do you think the number one or number two people are doing that you're not doing? you think it's possible that they're modernizing their systems and utilizing some of this stuff? And maybe that's why they have an advantage. It's like, yeah, that's definitely possible. Okay. Do you think that that gap will continue to grow between you and them over the next six months? Yeah, that's probably possible. Okay. So, you know, I'll circle back with you in a few months and the timing might be right. That gap's going to be a little bigger. It's going to be a little harder for us to close it but we still can make a dent in it. If you change your mind and you want to try to, you know, implement some of this a little sooner, that's fine as well. It's totally up to you. And that's the genius of Scott Lee's. Yes, These it are is. The things that he's taught me for 10, 12 years when he was in his young thirties. So. <laughs> did I dig him? Did I dig him a little bit there? I tried to be gentle. That was. You did a little, but people, there were, I, I, honestly, I like it's your time. People also like to enjoy that, but you it's gotta, your time. You know, Don't waste your my you gotta, time. <laughs> you got to dig people a little bit. And, you know, listen, if, if I, for me, if I went through about all of my sales calls without digging or without having any fun, I would be miserable. Yes. So in order for me to survive as a seller, I have to inject pieces of my snarky personality into my calls or I will lose my mind. So yeah. that's what I, uh, and, that's what I try to do. And I don't think what you said is tweaking. Like that's an honest truth. <laughs> Yeah. that they know in the back of their head yeah, and that nobody ever articulates. They've never had a coach tell them these things. And 
you're, you know, you're laying it out there as a way for them to make a decision without, you know, calling them stupid because they're not necessarily stupid. They just don't know what they don't know. And yeah. so you're just trying to open up, you know, shine a light on them. So yeah, I'm trying to shine a light on, on a, a dark part of the room that maybe they should pay attention to a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. And as long as you're nice and polite, they know it's a safe space to come back and be like, yeah, I need this now. Yeah. So what's, what's the hardest part, Lori, about building something from scratch and taking it to market for the first time? You're doing this right now. It's your first time through the ringer here. Like what's been the hardest part? Um, daily. It is hard. Um, it is, I think one of the loneliest things I've ever done, mm. you know, and coming off of, you know, two years of COVID loneliness, like it's, it's very lonely. So I, I is, it, is it lonely because you're a team of one or are you talking about loneliness because you're at home? Like what? No, not at home. I've been a remote worker for a decade. Okay. I prefer okay. this. Um, it is being a team of me is lonely knowing that now, you know, I'm, I took a bet on myself and I was like, yeah, I can do this. I know I can, yeah. and I'm in it when I have a question, right. I just did a, a whole pricing thing and I three, four X star pricing. My CEO was like, how'd you do that? And I was like, I need to talk to you. Is it okay that I'm doing this? And I caught myself asking permission. I was like, I actually don't need that permission. Mm. Um, but I wanted, I'm used to having someone over me that I can fact check and do that. And I don't, you know, I have, we have a business mentor. We have these other people. I have communities I go to, but the loneliness is in, I'm the top. And I, where do I go for that help? And what if, what if there's something that I'm not a Salesforce admin? I don't have my wrap ups just yet. We're almost there of, okay, but I need this working today. What do I, and I feel very isolated. So yeah, I yeah. have reached out to a lot of other first timers. And we, I think that's great. I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned, you know, the different types of resources and where to find them and more than anything, just willingness to reach out rather than bang your head okay. against the wall all on your own. Oh, when so, I get to the point of like rage tears, are you kidding me? I have like, I jump on Slack, Scotty's little sales club. I find a couple people. I find people yeah. in TNS, my other communities, AP, obviously my mentor call yeah. her. And she's like, what's happening? I was like, Salesforce hates me. She's like, are you crying at Salesforce? I'm like, yes, help me. It's like, did you, <laughs> did you anticipate this being the hardest part or is it surprising? I'm very surprised by it. Uh, I actually started writing down the emotional side of it on a blog, which I don't know if anyone can find, but it's out there. Uh, it was considering having, starting a podcast and talking to other first timers. And a lot of them were like, yeah, I do it. Can't do that right now. Maybe I'll do it. I love it. Time. The first timer podcast. I call it confessions of a first time revenue leader right now. And I have it, it's all prepped and I'm ready. Good name. You need, you're ready. Anything with the word confession, it draws. Yeah. 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 You win or, or you're yeah. Exactly. Cause it, this emotional side was really surprising to me. And I have found a lot of the other first timers when I asked them, like, is this real? They go, Oh my God, thank you for saying that. Yes. And then the, we're, they're coming back to me and telling me more of these little emotional moments. We're putting, you know, 30 minutes every month just to check in and we can ask each other tactical stuff, but also, you know, when a big thing, success or a fail, something of like, how do I go to get that pick me up in a way that I now, I no longer so what, have. A so dad. what are the emotional pieces? Like, what's it like, like, you know, give people, you know, okay, you're going to be the first time revenue leader or the first time yeah. revenue person, right? What's the emotional piece they need to be prepared for or nobody ever told you about this? Um, it's the feeling that you're on an island in a spotlight. It's not yeah. just you're alone out there. It's that everyone is watching. That's the feeling, right? Because every meeting, every call, how's the revenue? How's the pipe? How's this? We're mm -hmm. going for funding. So everyone's asking what the sales calls are. You get on the call and you're just learning the product and knowing like the first time you're a rep, but you don't have that, that safety. You don't have that playbook that was already built that teaches you every single question. And at some point you're like, mm -hmm. I need these answers and I need to know, and who do I go to for it? Um, it, it's me. Great. I get to look in the mirror and figure that one out. Again, the spotlight, it's just here. Um, the fact that now that my title has changed and the presence has changed on social media and the like, I'm getting a lot more attention in a very different way. And it's, it is, it's a spotlight out on an Island. It feels very Truman showy, I guess I'll say. Yep. Interesting. Yep. 
Yeah. So this, so this was a surprise. What did you think was going to be the hardest part? And then I'll, I'll and then Richard, I'll turn it over to you after Lori answers this question. What did you think was going to be the hardest part that has turned out not to be the hardest part? Turned out not to be my relationship with my leaders. I was prepped for a very clear, very direct, but like barriers on with what I have going on with my CTO and my CEO. That's not it. Is she trying to say that she found an awesome CEO? I'm I'm sitting here going, so is your, so was your expectation you might be micromanaged? Um, a little micromanaged, a little What about like more like a racehorse? Yeah. Yes. That's what I mean. More of that, like go more harder, fast. You need this. What numbers give me better as opposed to, I have found a very collaborative, very um, great person. I want you to take take three or four seconds. Now that you work with someone like that, Mm. is there anything that you asked in your interview that makes you go, oh, they did at, you know, that that's why I found the right person. Or now that you have worked with someone who's like this and is willing to give you the, the, the space, what two questions do you, would you advise other people to ask that would help them indicate if they're this kind of leader? For me, it would be about goal setting. So when I talked with my CEO, I asked a lot of questions about timelines, about his goals, why he started. And I wanted to know, again, I started a blog about the emotions. I'm going to do a pod about emotions of it. I'm very tapped into, we make decisions based on how we're feeling. So I asked him, why did you start this? Why did you take that leap? What, it, what, what's the importance here for you? Are you, how are you paying yourself? Are you and your family, how are you able to do that? So I can try to figure out what levers are in here. So I know if he's, if someone is giving me a whole talk track about how much time I have all this great stuff. And I find out that their partner is doing two or three extra jobs so they can cover it. And their kid needs this extra and that under no circumstance, do I have a long time? because their family is going to come first. And I asked, I usually ask a lot of questions about this when I find other people to go work with. Um, When I went to go work with AP, I know she had two young kids. It was like, I I wanted mentorship and guidance to get myself to a leadership place. And I wanted to learn from her. I need to figure out how she managed her time. Because at the end of the day, when her kids are crying, she's going to pick up that call. She's not talking to me. So it's figuring out where they place their goal and their value. So I would ask, a, it's not just one question. It's a lot of nuanced questions where you're getting to know the person, their triggers, their, um, their goals here, and then take that and make the story. Figure out if that fits for where you are able to step in and help. That's great. That's, that's what I was looking for. I knew it would be more than two questions, but I, I, yeah. <laughs> I needed to limit you. Otherwise you'll go off on a list. Yeah, I will. Um, so, all right. So I want to know what you wrote down in preparation for this conversation. I wrote down so many things. I also prepped yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, oh, look at that. Fuck in out case of here. you're not watching, oh my she God, has wait. a coffee mug Hold that on. says, Richard, you're on mute. Why have I not gotten that, Scott? Why didn't I, you gotten that? That oh, is man. absolutely incredible. Where did you get that? Uh, this is dry erase marker on my personal mug. I made it beautiful. for this call. Absolutely beautiful. That's Lori the, that wins is, today. We got to send her some surf and sail yeah. swag or something. Yes. To so earn I, it. That's the second best thing that's ever happened. Aside back from when I had a client and I stepped away and they took a picture of my background and then they all put it on as their background. Oh, that's In cute. my training. And, uh, and I didn't even notice. Like I had no clue because <laughs> that's how cool it was. You were so, just and, looking okay. at those faces, Richard, adding value, seeing if people understood you. You couldn't look at their background. Right. So um, Scott needs one of those too, so that when we're doing the podcast, I was thinking podcast, of sending you both up. these. I'll, 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 I'll copy. I'll make yeah. it. Oh my that's that's so great. That's Okay. What are these? What are these questions? What is this list of things you have down? I think you have done extensive prep and research. We're flipping the whole experience around Sooner than it. later Thank season you. three is going to be chaotic i can tell yeah. okay Listen, Lori, you, Lori's in control Lori is in control you two are expensive and if i have you locked on a zoom uh i'm going to use my time well 
<laughs> I love it. I'm dropping my pencil over here. I'm losing my mind. Right. Oh. <laughs> I will give you the broad categories and you tell me what you're comfortable with. Cause I don't know. We don't have enough time for this. Uh, sales marketing partnerships, bucket, uh, reporting difference of pre-seed seed, pre-revenue pre company, hiring founder led sales that switch, and then utilizing social channels. There are multiple questions under each of those buckets. <laughs> You pick Richard because she's got the coffee mug with your name on it. You pick. I want to do the founder led sales switching. Okay. Right. Um, I think we've talked enough about sales and marketing before. Um, and I, I like when we can find something that's controversial. Oh, so controversial. Let's do it. Um, so, in founder led sales, how do we start to evolve? from you know our company right now i am selling to my ceo he is an energy efficiency engineer any question i have i can go back and ask him he's great at selling it but he's not a salesperson mm -hmm. um so how to evolve that switch also the sparkle of the beginning stage of course when people buy from us they're buying for him right yes. they're buying him and the promise so how to switch it now to not buying from lori buying from infosense all right, I'm going to go first since I got to choose the topic. Uh, so one, what you just said has to be said to the CEO. And for me, I think it's a great way, even in the interview process, to say, why do you think people buy from you? You know, and then I can say, well, you know, you know, my experience has been that what founders are doing is they're buying the founder. And, you know, how do you feel about that? Because I want to get their sense of whether or not they believe it. And maybe they do, and maybe they don't. And then saying, well, great. Well, that's the transition we have to work on because we okay. don't have that. So then I would say, can we get on the phone with a couple of the clients that you sold together mm -hmm. and ask them this question? Mm -hmm. Let's ask them, what about Lori made you want to buy at this early stage startup? And what about the product? And that then I think is how you could figure it out and build into your sales culture as well as your company culture. Cause your CEO should, you could then go say, Hey, take this, share this with marketing, share this with engineering. This is, and these are the conversations that CEOs and founders I think want to have, but nobody's ever coached them. Right. Particularly if they're a tech founder, it, yeah. right. Like yeah. they're, you know, you know, oftentimes the tech folks aren't necessarily the most um, social person, right? Like they're not, you know, they, they, they like to yeah. geek out on the tech, right? So yeah. their social interactions and social skills are different, which is why they hire salespeople. But when you can put those two things together, that's what I would do. So that's the first thing I would do is I'd want to talk to customers with my CEO present so that he or she could learn and hear directly from the customer what's being said. And I would tell my CEO and founder that they're not allowed to talk in that meeting. Yeah. Because they will try to take over. Yeah. So, <laughs> Scott, what about you? Yeah, my, my take, I think, is a, is a little bit, is a little bit different. Um, if I'm understanding the, the question right. To, to me, I, I've got to get whatever is working for the founder, I got to get it out of their head and onto paper. And that is something that a lot of uh, startups and early salespeople don't do they'll have a conversation and they just try to remember everything. And the founder themselves never takes the time to put anything down on paper. Yep. So, you know, the information gets stuck and it gets siloed and you can't then codify it. Cause what we need is what works for the CEO onto paper. Yes. Then we need to have Lori put her spin on it because she's a professional salesperson. So she can improve upon what the founder has been doing and lock it in. And once you're able to do that, and Lori can go sell minus the CEO who's not even, or the founder who's not even in the, on the calls or in the room, she's able to prove that that messaging process works. But don't you, then, often, don't you want that knowledge from the customer too? I'm not saying you don't want that. I'm just taking the conversation. I'm just, taking the question in a different, a different route. Yeah. First you're thing, building a pitch that way. Huh? You're, you're working on how to build the pitch yeah. in Lori's frame of reference and Lori's tone. Yes. Lori's perspective. Yeah. 
Yeah, and and Lori Lori's skill set and her expertise, and then once she's able to do that, you should have some confidence that okay, we can hire a couple reps, and if Lori can get those reps to build pipeline, get meetings, and close deals, now we should have confidence that this thing is ready to scale. So that's that's how I was interpreting the question. Cool. All right, Lori, what else? We got time for one more. Sneak one more in, Lori. Still on the founder led. How about? Oh my God, we're forty minutes in. Holy shit. <laughs> um, how about metrics to prove when we switch that founder led sale over to Lori led? Yeah. I'm going to defer to that. I haven't had to do metrics in a long time. Um, so lucky. So it's, it's it's to me it's not so much. Uh, you use this phrase metrics to prove. I mean, the proof is in the result. Yeah. That it works. And you don't really have a frame of reference to old metrics because the founder never took the, the founder never tracked their metrics. Exactly. Let's be honest. Yeah. Never. Yeah. So I kind of don't want to have that conversation with a founder. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm tracking the metrics from right now. And I'm saying to the founder, Whatever you did before doesn't matter to me because you didn't track it. You don't know. You're giving me anecdotal information and you're the founder and the figurehead and you weren't cold calling. You were getting deals from the VC network or whatever industry, you know, friends and family type of thing. So that those metrics are bullshit. So I want to know the metrics from my efforts. Like it took me a hundred calls to close a deal, whatever the metrics are. Right. And from there, I can figure out, okay, this is what I think it's going to take. And this is what my guidelines should be for the reps that I hire. Right. Mm -hmm. So that whole metrics to close funnel in terms of the KPIs of how many calls and to how many meetings and to how many, you know, contracts sent to, to what they close, yeah. that stuff is still valuable, very valuable. And I set my quotas off of that. I can set my forecast off of that. The one thing that I would try to uh, articulate and lock in is like, what is this sales cycle likely to be? Yeah. If it took the founder X amount of time, let's say 90 days to close yes. a deal. And I can close a deal on this new process in 90 days straight away without their, you know, brand or yeah. industry relationships. Like I'm going to be able to speed that sales cycle up over time with Absolutely. my team and my reps. Yep. And that gives me confidence. I think I can present that to the founder and say, yo, I just matched you already. Right. <laughs> yeah. Once I figure out a little bit more and lock this in, like these are going to start We're to gonna go. be running. Yeah. And then that founder hopefully is like, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I hired the right person. You're closing these deals faster and you've improved upon what I knew would work. Great. I made a good hire. That's kind of right. how I'm thinking about it. Yeah. So here's, your, I'm going to, agree with everything you say and add a couple of pieces of advice in, Great, in my mind. <clears throat> One is you have, I love what Scott said of like, I'm not going to talk about the metrics, but how you say that to your founder, because they're engineers, they're all about the data. Mm -hmm. is you have to be mindful about it and say it in a way, a little bit like Scott said of like, Hey, we're establishing baselines. And the reason we are, is because your goal originally was not to worry about that. Your goal was to go get us customers. And so, yes, I'll take any information you have, but it, it's anecdotal. Yeah. So it's going to take time. There is no way to make this go faster until we know what we're dealing with. Right? And so you kind of have to explain it to them. And then the other thing is you kind of, and I figured this out, particularly with analytical people, whether they're founders or not, is you have to slow your pace way down because they like to think about almost every word you're saying and they need to absorb it. It's one of the reasons I think, this, now this isn't just a belief system that we all know tech people don't like to talk to salespeople. Yeah. One, because we suck at talking to tech people. But when you do, I think when you are a little bit more conscious of your pace and tone, you they buy in more because they know yeah. you're not trying to shuck something at them right like they know that you're getting them to lean in um, yeah. subconsciously so that's the only piece i would add to that 
Okay. It was really a um, little side note off that of how we sell to technical people. My boss and I, we were on a, a sales call being sold to yesterday. And I've been, you know, doing little coaching things with him when we're on co calls together of like pacing, the way we talk about it, deliver pricing and shut up, stuff like that. He said, we did our debrief take. That's that bad. call was like, wait, that was really interesting because you've been telling me all of this, that nobody cares about what they do. They just care about what they can do for us. And the first 10 minutes, they didn't actually talk about Infosense. I was like, yep. And he said, that's what you've been saying. I was like, oh my God, job yeah. security. That so, company just bought me a few more right. months yeah. by maybe, goofing up their maybe, sale to my job. you your counter. next paycheck. So, yeah, they right, did. Lori, I'm going to give you one piece of advice and everybody yeah. else. The worst advice I ever got, and I did it all the time, and even Scott taught it to me or, or coached me to do it more when I was working for him. I never gave you bad advice. I know you're lying already. So <laughs> this was, no, this, you did. You did teach this, which is, Give the price and then shut up. And the person who speaks first loses. How is that bad advice? Oh, because, we need to have a whole show on this. Because here's what I would say, particularly to tech people, because they don't know how to not answer the question. I want to say, and I don't want to have to interpret the silence. I will say, Lori, look, cost of the service is $15,479. How does that feel? Because pricing is not, how does that sound? Pricing's not a sound. It's, a feel. it's not, yeah. how does it look? Pricing is not a look. It's a feeling. Yeah, but you deliver that question and then you shut up. Yes. yes. We're speaking but I, but if I just say, hey, Lori, it's 15,479. Well, we're talking the same thing. Yeah, no. yeah, we're talking the same thing. I, a lot of times will add, is that number meaningful to you? Is that valuable to you? Other things. Open-ended question. Go to an open-ended question. So it, is just better, the feel? it is better to say, how, how does that feel? I, I, okay. I Done. Okay. Done. Cool. Lori, this was fantastic. You oh have God. been a killer opening guest of the year 2022. We appreciate you. And by the way, Richard, I don't know if you know, Lori is coming to Surf and Sales. She ah, bought her which one? November. And I know you're looking for it. I am a yoga teacher, trainer, <sighs> certified. So oh. you were looking for someone to do. So there we go. a lot of people who want to do that. We will have that. You're not going to have Lori. any opening slots for long. They're going to be Lori, gone. Lori, in November. Back. Scott, we Lori's just been entered into the surf and sales schedule for November. She doesn't I was, know. I was about to, not only that, she's been added to the promotion. Yeah. That's By the right. way, <laughs> if you right. like yoga, we have a professional yes. yoga person who's attending, who yes. will be leading yes. some sessions. So. And we, uh, we want to thank once again our sponsors, 2022 sponsors of the Surf and Sales Podcast, Reprise, as well as Scratchpad. Thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again, Lori. Thanks. Bye.